he was, just, he was basically just having a go at science, really. Right. But um, in a through through this sort of spiritual connotation, mm. so it was really interesting because I've never read anything that's just so against what I had historically read so much of. You know, it was fascinating. Yes, and of course the sad thing is there doesn't have to be that clash between religion and science that there was, unless you're a literalist. Mm, of course. If you're a literalist, well, there's going to be a clash. Yes. But if you, in our case, if you study the Bible and you see that different books are written for different reasons, different times, different purposes, and some of them aren't meant to be literally, scientifically mm. true, like the story in Genesis is a beautiful metaphor mm. about the creation of the world. It's not meant to be a scientific description. Mm. So there doesn't have to be that great clash that there was. But for literalists, there always will be, sadly. Of course. Mm. Um, just to play... Um, devil's advocate a bit here and how do we know that the that, the parts in genesis and the, the old testament stuff were never meant to be literal oh, because okay. obviously for thousands of years we thought they were yeah some people did for a long time yeah the, the in the last 150 to 200 years there was a great outburst of biblical scholarship and i have to say it didn't start with the catholic church it started with the protestant um, christians right they were great into the early biblical scholarship and Catholics sort of came on board around about the 1940s when Pope Pius XII said, yes, yeah, go for it, you know, it's good. Right. And uh, people then became experts at studying the different types of genres in the Bible and realising, well, these are not all the same, they're not all history. Some books are historical, but some are not. Mm. And even in the Gospels, some parts are historical, some are not. So there's different genres and people have learnt, and the experts, the real biblical scholars, can tell you the different types of of writings in the Bible and what in general they were meant to do. Mm -hmm. So the parables, stories that Jesus told, for example, aren't literally true, but they teach us wonderful lessons about life. Mm. Um, in Genesis, uh, in, there were, you know, uh, it was probably written, I think, somewhere about six or 700 BC when the um, Jewish people were living next to other people who had their own creation stories. And they said, well, how do we, who believe in one God, how do we describe creation? So they they wrote, someone wrote that story to put it in a sort of a context. What are the lessons behind creation? Right, okay. But yeah, they weren't scientists and they, they didn't know anywhere near what we know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. About yeah. the development of the universe and all of the 13 and a half billion years of the universe's history, etc. Yeah. yeah. And so if we take on that um, understanding of, you know, these were parallels and these were historical, mm -hmm. uh, how much of We'll talk about Jesus now. How much of Jesus' life do we assume to be historically accurate? Right. And I'm talking specifically about really the resurrection here. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Well, um, there are four Gospels, but there were actually more, some that weren't accepted in the early church, but they, they accepted the four that we've got as being the sort of most, whatever, accurate or something. Okay. Three are very similar. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, um, Matthew, Mark and Luke are uh, very similar. And they start with the story of Jesus' life, going through to his death and his resurrection. John's Gospel is a bit more theological and was written later. Mm. I think about 40 years later, about 100 AD. So, um, yeah, um, there's sort of common things in all the Gospels, like the story of the passion of Jesus suffering and being put to death on a cross is similar and the same in all the four Gospels, but some little parts are different, mm. obviously. And they think that's because um, they weren't written down like the first one was probably written about 70 AD mm. and Jesus died somewhere around 27 AD or something like that. You can argue about that depending on the years. Yeah. Um, but people shared stories. They had this oral tradition. They shared stories and handed them down for about 30 or 40 years. And then eventually somebody said, we better write these down. So they were written down according to the different traditions that were handed down. Right. So different people remember different things, emphasise different things and all of that. So within all of that, the historical person, Jesus of Nazareth, comes through. But you can't say, well, that's exactly... Of course. Know, that's exactly... You've got to pick up the general picture of the man mm. coming through. When you get to the resurrection part, I think that's where faith kicks in, doesn't it? Yeah. Because um, the rest is pretty historically accurate. There, there are references to Jesus in other writings. Some of the, one of the Roman historians mentions this person called Christus who caused trouble in Palestine. Oh, right. So there's, you know... You can assume that... You, you can assume Jesus really existed. I of think there's enough proof of that. When you get to the resurrection, of course, you, you're into the realm of belief and faith and stuff like that. Yeah. But there seems to have been, amongst the early followers, a genuine conviction that something dramatic happened. Right. 
And yeah. that's the way they described it. Yeah, and that was in, is that in all four Gospels? Yes, yeah. the stories are slightly different. There are different resurrection stories in the different Gospels, but they all have that mm. to one degree or another. Mm. And John's, uh, Mark's Gospel is the first, and it describes initially, it had a couple of endings, and its first ending finished with an empty tomb, question mark. Yep. And somebody wrote another chapter, I think, a bit later. But, but they all have that concept there, one way or the other, yeah. Okay. And then just so I'm completely aware of it, so it was um, the understanding that the, on the third day when they went to um, visit his tomb, the human form, the, well, the body wasn't there. Um, did anyone actually, and then from what I remember, it was just he had ascended into heaven, but did anyone have any... I believe Daddy Thomas did or something. Yeah, there were some stories in the different Gospels about what are called resurrection appearances. Yeah. Where people had this experience, like we were talking about some of the religious experiences early, they had this experience of the risen Christ being present to them, mm. and they're described in the different Gospels. Really? Okay. So, so the, the, yeah, Daddy Thomas was one, and the, the, the disciples. It's a good name, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doubting. Yeah. 